Hello, this is Mark Gallucci with Digital Control Incorporated. This video is going to deal with the transmitter selection menu option off of the F5 Digitrack receiver. So here we're looking at the F5's main menu. I'm now going to thumb it down, thumb it over, thumb it over. I've just highlighted transmitter selection. As you see here, I'm going to click the trigger and up comes the sub menu. So the first thing that's highlighted is the F5. Let's go ahead and click that. So here are all the F5 transmitters. We have a few of them. We have an F5 1912. We have an F5 12 1.3. We have an F5 18.5. And lastly, you have an F5 8.4. Let's go back up here and we'll talk about the F5 1912 and then uh, the 12 1.3. Okay, let's take a look at the icon. Notice the transmitter is pointing up and the 19 is highlighted. Over here, the transmitter is pointing down and the 12 is highlighted. So what that tells you is how you hold the transmitter when you load the batteries. If I point it to the sky and physically push the batteries up into its battery cavity, that transmitter is going to start off broadcasting in 19 kilohertz. Conversely, if I point the transmitter to the ground and load the batteries into it, that transmitter is going to start up in 12 kilohertz. Okay? So this is, this is where you, you get to the menu and you tell it what frequency you want to listen to. So this transmitter, is, uh, it's, it's a special transmitter. It is dual frequency, but it only has the ability to broadcast one of those frequencies at a time. You do, however, have the ability to change its frequency while you're underground, while you're drilling. And you do so through a roll combination. You slowly roll your drill sting to 10 o'clock. You wait 10, 12, 15 seconds. Then you slowly roll it to 2 o'clock. You're going to wait 10, 12, 15 seconds, something in that neighborhood. Then you can slowly roll it to 7 o'clock. Once again, you wait 10, 12, 15 seconds. After that, you're going to notice the signal is going to drop out. You're going to lose depth information or the depth is going to drop out and you're going to lose your, your roll and pitch. That tells you that that transmitter has in fact switched to the other frequency. When you see that happen, you get back to this menu and you highlight it and you click it and you tell it which one you want to listen to. That's a dual frequency transmitter. Before you go underground, you need to calibrate both of those frequencies. If you want to use both frequencies, you better calibrate both of those frequencies. Okay? Just remember to do that. Exit back out. Next up, 12, 1.3. Well, this is also a dual frequency transmitter, but this transmitter is what we call a true dual frequency transmitter. It will broadcast both frequencies simultaneously. And that's what this D stands for, dual, dual. Dual H, DH. That stands for dual, the H stands for the high. You've asked it to pick up the higher of those two frequencies. DL, dual low. If I click it here, I will have told it I want it to pick up the lower of those two frequencies, 1.3. Most contractors go underground in the dual mode. Okay. The 1.3, that's the frequency you're going to select if you're drilling underneath rebar, near under mesh, steel pipe, chain link. These passive interferences that you need to do with. We know that that 1.3 does a, a much better job of getting proper information to the receiver. There's a subtle trade-off. The 1.3 frequency, you don't get quite as strong of signal. Okay? You'll get a little bit more signal when you, when you uh, listen to the 12 kilohertz signal. Let's slide it all the way over here to the SH mode. SH stands for single high. Okay, so notice that icon, it's pointing upward. Again, if I load the batteries for initially when that transmitter is pointing upward, pointing to the sky, I will start it in single high. Single, one frequency, H high for the higher of the two frequencies, 12 kilohertz. SH, single high. I'll use that when I'm going particularly deep or maybe I know I'm going to an environment of a bit heavy active interference and I feel I need the need for stronger signal. Okay, so single high, when you're going to be going deeper, heavy active interference, most guys go underground dual, okay, they'll, they'll select a 1.3 when they're in the rebar situation.
pass interference situation. Once again, you've got uh, three calibrations to worry about here. SH mode, DH mode, and DL mode. If you want to take advantage of all those uh, transmitter options, you need to calibrate it. Okay, F5 18.5, that's a uh, single frequency transmitter. If you have that transmitter, you click it, very easy. Same with the 8.4, that is also a single frequency transmitter. So a quick recap, folks. Um, the F5 Digitrack receiver will pick up a 19 kilohertz signal, a 12 kilohertz signal, a 1.3 kilohertz signal, an 18.5 kilohertz signal, and an 8.4 kilohertz signal. These first two, they're dual frequency. This one will, can only broadcast one at a time. You tell it which one it'll broadcast, either when you load the batteries or underground doing a roll combination. 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 7 o'clock. That's the roll combination. And then this transmitter, the F5 12 1.3, that is a true dual frequency transmitter. When I drop the batteries down to it, point the transmitter to the ground, it starts up in dual mode. It is broadcasting two frequencies simultaneously. And it's up to us to tell it which one we want to listen to. All right, let's keep this going. F5 transmitters, pardon me, F series transmitters, as indicated right here, F series. Click it. There's two transmitters here, an F19 and F12. These transmitters were transmitters originally produced to be used with the F2 locating system. So any transmitter that you currently have that works with an F2 system can also be read by your F5 Digitrack receiver. The reverse is not true. An F2 receiver will not pick up F5 designated transmitters. Okay? Cable transmitter. If you're going underground with a cable, you'll have to select it, choose that right here. F cable 12. F series transmitter cable 12 kilohertz. That's how we read that. Next over is the SST. DCI makes a steering tool, a proper steering tool with a magnetometer downhole for finding yaw. If you're using an SST, you need to tell it that by here. Don't be alarmed if your, uh, your particular F5 receiver does not show this menu icon. The receiver we have in front of us today has got the proper sard hardware software configuration, the proper microcontroller code to have that icon there. If you're going to go underground with an SST, we'll, uh, we'll make sure that you have the proper software hardware configuration so that you can do run an SST or uh, even a tent track device. Click the trigger. Fluid pressure, FPT, fluid pressure transfer. Let's click that. So you see the same variance as we did with the non-fluid pressure, a 1912 and a 12 1.3. Works exactly the same, folks. The only difference is that these transmitters also provide annular fluid pressure. I'll go ahead and click that. A quick review. If I point that transmitter to the sky and load the batteries, it'll initially start broadcasting in 19 kilohertz. If I point that transmitter down to the ground and drop the batteries down into it, it'll start in 12 kilohertz. Again, it's dual frequency. You need to calibrate twice. This transmitter can only show, only broadcast one frequency at a time, okay? But you will have the, you will have the ability to change it underground via that roll combination. What's the roll combination? 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 7 o'clock. You're going to pause briefly, 10, 12, 15 seconds at those locations, and it'll, ch it'll change frequencies while it's underground. 12, 1.3, again, just like the, the non-fluid pressure variant. You've got SH mode, DH mode, and DL mode. SH, single high, DH, dual high, DL, dual low. SH, single frequency, the higher of the two choices, 12, 12 kilohertz. Notice the transmitter is pointing upward. If you load the batteries in that configuration, you will start it in SH mode. DH, notice the transmitter pointing down. When you point it down, you start it in dual. Again, this is a true dual frequency transmitter. It can broadcast, it will broadcast both frequencies simultaneously. If I want to listen to the higher of those two, I go to DH. That's the 12K. If I want to listen to the lower of those two frequencies, the 1.3 kilohertz, I select DL. Okay? Again, 1.3 is what we use when we're going into an area of passive interference. 
rebar, mesh, steel of some kind. Okay, so those are the right fluid pressure variants. Tensor track. Tensor track, for those that do not know, tensor track is a device that you use on a back ream. It's installed in your drill string just behind your reamer and in front of your product pipe. It has two purposes. It monitors your annular fluid pressure, sends that information. It also monitors the pull force being applied to the product pipe. So you can monitor the strain, the forces that you're putting on that product pipe as you're back reaming and pulling that thing through. If you have that, if you're gonna use that, you need to tell the receiver that you're gonna do that via this here, click the trigger. Lastly, the duct track. The duct track, these are transmitters. They're narrower. There's a six inch version, there's a 12 inch version. They do not have roll and pitch. Purely a raw tone so that when we, uh, we can track the location and the depth of an existing duct. When you have a duct track, you're supplied a, a pulling eye or a, or a threaded end cap, battery end cap. You can put it onto a rotter. So these, these are pulled or pushed through an empty conduit and you walk over the top and you can identify its, its precise location. If you're going underground with the duct track transmitter, you need to tell the handheld receiver that you're doing so right here. Okay? So, a little bit long-winded, but that takes care of all the menu items of the Digitrack F5 receiver's transmitter selection menu. Look for other videos that explain other aspects of the Digitrack F5 receiver.